So hello and welcome once again to the latest New Junction video. Now, I didn't think I'd be making this for several weeks yet, but uh, thanks to a chap called James, who kindly got in touch after the last video, who said he had a spare bag of sculptor mold under his layout that I could uh, have. Um, the progress can continue weeks earlier than uh, unfortunately my long lost order from the States will take. So, as you can see, sculptor mold is in hand, so I've got my uh, old Mark Freeze out, and I'm just finally committing to where this tunnel mouth is going to go. And uh, while that one rolls off, doesn't want to play. And then uh, we can get on with sculptor molding the scene, painting it, etc., and getting the whole tunnel mouth ready for the next level of scenery. So, as you can imagine, I've got the four lines. Um, each will have full trains whizzing through and this tunnel mouth is very realistic in the sense of it's quite tight. It was made to measure and obviously you can see there's one in the background uh, so this one's a bit wider and uh, all being well we can now move this around and fettel it around just to find its permanent place and then we can get on with the hillside. So I'm not going to waste any more time it's time to uh, do lots of fettling and um, We'll see if we can get the tunnel mouth in its final resting place. Right, so with that done, it's time to um, basically go back a few steps and glue all the polystyrene blocks behind this. Uh, into position and uh, slowly start building up the hillside. I am going to leave the coaches in situ just in case I knock the tunnel mouth. Now I've not glued this in place and I am going to roughly go round it. Currently the only permanent bit is going to be the polystyrene blocks behind it because this will have to come out to be painted again but I have traced on the baseboard where it needs to sit and uh, having played with these coaches it's nice to be able to uh, confirm that the trains actually go through the uh, tunnel map. Right, let's get to gluing. And of course, who could forget the hot wire cutter stage? Hopefully uh, if these new pieces stay in place, I'll just be able to sculpt it ever so slightly. The only catch I've had so far is I can't put anything in front of the tunnel mounds because the tunnel mounds obviously have to come out. So eventually I'm gonna have to uh, think of a way to put something here without A crossing the line onto this extension board, which obviously this this piece comes off. There's a, a line all the way up. And then of course, just in case the tunnel has to come out, I am leaving one of these levels, so it's this piece will come off, um, just in case something derails. Um, it shouldn't be a problem because there's a big entry point behind it, um, but you never know. So all these things, I've got to try and remember as I'm doing this. Another thing I've got to remember is it's uh, getting colder, so none of the uh, various stages want to happen quickly anymore. So whereas a couple of weeks ago I could put glue down and then it'd be dry within a matter of 10-15 minutes, 
now it's taking all night because uh, the temperatures really dropped almost into single digits so I'm having to weigh the polystyrene down at the same time um, and of course the next step from here is uh, of course to plaster bandage uh, and then of course add in the bag of sculptor mold which really will take a long while to dry so once again I'm using the plaster bandage as the uh, first layer on top of the polystyrene just to add some uh, structural strength and of course um, as a reminder these rolls came from railstuff.com which is not affiliate it's just where I got them from and uh, <clears throat> yeah so the process is very simple cut them into strips and then uh, lather them on and put them on top As you can probably hear it's absolutely tipping it down outside and uh, poor Lulu's soaking wet and still wants to go outside but it's uh, a dark cold evening so that's not happening. <laughs> a top tip I will give you just before I start laying on the plaster bandage that I learned quite a long time ago but it, it's going to be for some of you out there it's going to be so obvious <laughs> and others out there it's going to be an epiphany like it was for me. That is when you do your plaster bandaging make sure you use warm water because that's like a little spa for my hands and it's amazing now uh, plastered and ready to dry. Now as you can see I have left this gap here um, because I'm going to have to pull the tunnel portals out to paint them but uh, I think it'll be alright in time. You won't really notice that. I can fill it with um, um, some foliage and of course I know what you're all thinking. Where's the star of the show? There she is, sulking because she wants to go out in the rain, but she can't. Because you're already soaking, aren't you? Good girl. <laughs> Better not pet her too much, because I'll uh, turn her white with plaster. So, it's been nearly a week since uh, the last clip, and as you can hear, it's now dry. Now, it feels um, damp, and that's just because it's generally damp. Um, but it's dry enough and solid enough to continue with the sculpture mold. So, using the bag that I was uh, kindly gifted, thank you again, James. Um, I'm now going to follow the same process as before, mix it together in some uh, water, which you can see is steaming away. Um, handy tip for modelling again in the winter. Um, but I'm also, after um, comments received off the last video, when I did it. <clears throat> I'm going to try something now. I've always mixed the sculptor mold, put it down separate layers. I'm actually going to mix in some um, acrylic burnt umber paint this time um, to, to basically to turn it brown and just to see how that works. Now the theory is if you paint um, the base on top you get a stronger colour um, but of course being modular if you knock it or chip it or anything like that it's going to be bright white so um, Maybe if I've got um, brown sculptor mold, um, which I can then also paint on top as well, it may just add a little bit of protection should I chip some of the scenery. So I'll give this a go. So thank you very much for everyone who uh, suggested that. Let's see how this goes. It's a very, uh, off the face of it, it's a very red burnt umber colour. What I may do 
is add a touch of black just to darken it down ever so slightly. Right, so this is as good as mixed in. Now, um, just as a reminder, all the bits that need sculpt mold are this fascia here, um, and then on the other side of this um, divider, all of this embankment over the top, and then back down the other side. So, I'm gonna waste no time now. I'm gonna get on putting this yummy mess onto the layout. like I'm adding in like a beef uh, puree onto the, uh, the layout but um, <clears throat> the paint probably uh, isn't quite as thick as it should have been but hopefully it'll uh, um, make the difference in the future if anything ever happens to the, uh, the ground cover. Um, I've decided this time because it's freezing to apply with the uh, flexible minion ruler um, what I'll do is once it starts to uh, set a bit more, I'll go over it with um, my fingers and just smooth in any bits. And then of course, don't forget, once it's dry, we sand it back anyway. Right, continue with the rest of the scene. Right, and there we are. It's um, amazing what you can do to some pretty dodgy tunes in the background. Right, so as before, because it's um, the weather's turned, it's now colder and damper, um, this is gonna take quite a while to dry, so I'd imagine I'm gonna be um, waiting for it really for another week before I can get on and add the paint to the top and add the soil, just to sort of unify it with the rest of this side of the layout. Now, um, my thoughts on painting the sculpt mold now I'm here, or adding paint to the sculpt mold before the mix, is as you can see, it's very pale. Um, I wouldn't say it's what I call uh, brown at all or earthy color. Um, however, it was taking a lot of paint. Um, there must be just a mass surface area in sculpt mold. Um, so, I can understand the reasoning for adding paint, but um, I think in practice, for me, for the odd chip, it's probably easier just to take a little pot of um, brown paint, and if it ever happened, just touch it up, um, because this absorbed a lot of paint. Um, so, um, hmm, it was worth trying, so thank you very much. Any feedback, always pop it in the comments, um, because it all is taken on board. Um, and as I say, it's all part of the fun, isn't it? Gotta give everything a go. right? Onwards and upwards, so I'm now going to continue um, with other jobs on the layout, but uh, unfortunately, this is gonna need a good while to dry. So as you can see, it's been the best part of a week since the last uh, scene of this, and it's as good as dry. Now, because it is very cold all of a sudden, um, it never feels completely dry, but it is, it is uh, touch dry for sure. So, as before, I've mixed up a brown wash to go over the uh, the pink sausage meat that I've now got on the layout. And uh, yeah, time to start building up the layout. So, here it goes.
and there we are. It's painted. Now, in re on the camera, I can it looks uh, oddly red slash pink, like the Sculptor did. Um, than it does in reality. Now it is a brown paint. Um, <clears throat> I always have a golden rule which I've broken for this is if I start using a product, finish using a product for that job. Now I couldn't get the uh, same brand of paint that I used on the first half and it is different. Now ultimately it won't make a jot of difference because it's um, going to all be covered over and it's just like the real world. It's all different but uh, <laughs> at the moment this is looking very red and very shiny, but the other half I'm quite happy with. Right, so I'm going to let this dry and uh, I'm going to get on with a few more jobs um, before we add the glue layer with the soil and hopefully we can really blend in the entire scene. So when I say other jobs, if I bring you uh, down the layer, oh there's Lulu, you can see all the messy wiring, but we come down the layer and we come to the opposite end, as you can see I have been working on the end board. So what you've now got, currently laid three of the four lines, um, as you can see on the end there. This is now, this is all temporary for when it's in garage mode. Um, and I've been using an old piece of radius two set track to make sure that it's at least radius two. Now it's one of the compromises of this layout being in two forms. And I will say, uh, new to me now. This is non-affiliate West Hill Wagon Works track pin mate and rail joiner mate. Game changer. Where have these been all my life? Now you know when you get the little trinkets, which are just game changing. Um, these are those. So you've got the uh, um, this is the uh, track pin. No, it's not. This is the rail joiner mate. And what you do is you stick the rail joiner in the end, and it is the perfect height. I'll show you Ooh, for a bit of track and it just gives you somewhere to leverage um, your rail joiners and it just makes the whole process so much easier because you've got something um, I suppose physical to push against and to lever against um, as opposed to just sort of twisting up rails and track and things like that so and the other one of course is the track pin mate <clears throat> now I haven't used this particularly for its main purpose which is um, that hole but uh, if you see anyone who uses track pins, um, you get them dropped in between sleepers and things, and uh, it's a nightmare to get them up. Handy little thing, it's got a magnet on the end. Look at that, look at that. Absolutely amazing, and uh, West Hill Wagon Works to thank for those. Amazing. So that brings us once again to the end of another video. Now. You can probably understand now why I've not had trains running in this video because I've been A doing lots of the scenery work on this side of the layout and also the return loops behind the camera where the camera stood um, which ultimately stops the loops of track so there's been nowhere to run trains so um, the main aim of this is to try and get leaps and bounds ahead so my next video I'll have a lot of trains running. Oh, that's the plan anyway. So. As ever, I want to say a big thank you to watching. Thank you very much to the channel patrons. And uh, of course, thank you very much to Lulu, who's still just there. Who is? There you go. Shame as blood if you can just see her in the, <laughs> down there. Um, poor thing. She does, she does go in. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll hopefully see you very soon in the next one. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>